Reed Menendez bribe conduit. In a trial in September of 2017, a 22-count indictment charged that from 2006 to 2013, United States Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey solicited and accepted numerous gifts from his friend Dr. Solomon Melgen, a Florida-based ophthalmologist. In exchange, Senator Menendez used the power of his office to try to influence an enforcement action against Dr. Melgen by the Centers for, for Medicare and Medicaid Services and to encourage the State Department and the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol to intervene on Dr. Melgen's behalf in a multi-million dollar contract dispute with the Dominican Republic. In 2009, CMS found Dr. Melgen had overbilled Medicare for $8.9 million from 2007 to 2008 by engaging in a prohibited practice known as multi-dosing. Medicare policy required that each patient receiving the drug Lucentis be treated using a separate vial, but Dr. Melgen routinely used the extra solution from a single vial, so-called overfill, to treat multiple patients. You need one vial for each eye, and you can't use leftover drug because of infection risk. Because he was reimbursed as if he used a separate vial for each patient, Dr. Melgen was paid for more vials of drug than he actually used. As Senator Menendez, longtime mega donor, Sol Solomon Men Melgen bribed Menendez with underage girls and vacations in the Dominican Republic as well as campaign funds. Senator Menendez's staff worked with Dr. Melgen's lobbyist on the CMS dispute and eventually arranged for Menendez to speak with Jonathan Blum, then acting principal, deputy administrator, and director of CMS. An official from the United States Department of Health and Human Services wrote Mr. Blum, quote, We have a bit of a situation with Senator Menendez, who is advocating on behalf of a physician friend of his in Florida, unquote. Almost three years later, in June 2012, Senator Menendez discussed multidosing with Marilyn Tavener, the then acting administrator of CMS, who stated CMS would not alter its position on multidosing. Senator Menendez threatened to raise the issue of multidosing directly with Kathleen, Kathleen Sebelius, then Director of Health and Human Services. So who does Menendez go to a week later to try to get Melgen off the hook but Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who sets up a meeting with HHS Director Sebelius to try and force them to back off, but not before Dr. Melgen earmarked $600,000 in contributions to be spent in New Jersey helping on the Senator's re-election. That $600,000 was then washed through, through the Senate Majority Pact to benefit Menendez, a clear quid pro quo bribe. Now what is not generally known is that Senate Majority Pact is Harry Reid's wholly owned creation, run exclusively by his former aides Rebecca Jolly and Susan McHugh. Moreover, the Melgen money was funneled through Reid aide Jake Perry, who Reid called a close friend and advisor. In a statement, Stephanie Potter, Executive Director of Senate Majority Pact, said the fundraiser no longer worked for the group. Mr. Menendez was fully aware that the contributions were intended as a favor to him. Within days of the first check, the Senate began pressing federal officials to intervene in the $8.9 million Medicare billing dispute with Dr. Melgen. The scheduler for Majority Leader of the Senate, Harry Reid, arranged a meeting among Sen Senator Reid, Senator Menendez, and Secretary Sebelius. Senator Menendez told his staff that he did not want to tell Dr. Melgen about the arrangement, quote, so that I don't raise expectations just in case it falls apart, unquote. At the meeting with Secretary Sebelius and Senator Reid, Senator Menendez advocated on behalf of Dr. Melgen's position in the Medicare billing dispute, focusing on his specific case and asserting unfair treatment of it. Senator Reid later told the FBI that Dr. Melgen's name probably came up during the meeting because his quote, individual situation was clearly the purpose of the meeting and they would have otherwise been speaking in a vacuum, unquote. Secretary Sebelius told Senator Menendez that because Dr. Melgen's case was in the administrative appeals process, she had no power to influence the matter. Majority Leader Reid then reached out to Obama White House Deputy Chief of Staff Alyssa Mende Mastro Monaco, informing her that Menendez was upset about how a Florida ophthalmologist was being treated by CMS and asking that she call the agency. Mastro Monaco demurred after recognizing the matter involved a dispute between a single doctor and an administrative agency, according to prosecutors. So what we do know for certain is the Menendez bribe fits well within the pattern displayed by Harry Reid of shaking down donors for donations in exchange for support of illegal activities. 
Apparently, the Department of Justice asks us to believe Reed never asked for any personal favors from Menendez, despite the large sums of money involved and despite a history of taking bribes stretching back 45 years. As interesting as Reed's own involvement was who turned up to testify at Menendez's trial. Harry Reed ended up not testifying, either because it would have opened him up to jeopardy for bribe influence or because the Department of Justice had cut a deal for his testimony. Instead, showing up on Menendez's behalf were Senators Cory Booker and Lindsey Graham, part of the good old boys' Senators Club. However, the really interesting testimonial that did not happen was that of Mark Elias, Elias is lawyer to Senator Harry Reid, to the DNC Democratic National Committee, and to the Senate Majority PAC, and is a partner of Perkins Coy, the powerful Washington law firm. It was Mark Elias who signed off on funding Fusion GPS to fund the notorious Steele memo alleging candidate Trump colluded with Russia. In short, the Menendez trial is just a sideshow to the real circus of bribes and influence peddling of Reid and Perkins Coy.